step into the intriguing world of Cleopatra, the captivating queen who held Egypt in the palm of her hand. But beneath her enchanting beauty and unmatched intellect, a sinister secret lay hidden. Welcome to History on Fleet. Today we unveil the dark truths behind Cleopatra's opulent lifestyle her deadly pastimes, the mastery of her seductive powers, and the chilling tale of her ultimate demise. Stay with us as we dive headfirst into the depths of Cleopatra's captivating story, uncover the secrets of her extravagant existence, the forbidden games she played with power, and the intricate web of love, lust, and betrayal that entangled her with Rome's most influential figures. Brace yourself for a roller coaster ride through history filled with shocking revelations and the gripping account of Cleopatra's tragic end. Cleopatra's family took keeping it in the family a little too seriously. The Ptolemaic dynasty kept their bloodline pure by intermarrying. The family tree was more of a family loop. Even Cleopatra's parents were possibly brother and sister. Cleopatra herself might have been a product of incest. Following this eerie family tradition, Cleopatra tied the knot with her kid brothers. First, her younger 10-year-old brother, Ptolemy XIII, when she was just 18 years old, and then 13-year-old Ptolemy XIV at the age of 23. Each played the role of her co-regent and husband. Cleopatra's Ptolemaic family tradition was a cocktail of power moves and murder plots, shaken, not stirred. When her younger brother husband, Ptolemy XIII, decided to make a bid for Egypt's throne, Cleopatra had no qualms about unleashing her ruthless ambitions, a move that spiraled into a brutal civil war and left her family on the endangered species list. After their father kicked the bucket, Cleopatra and Ptolemy XIII's squabbles graduated from sibling rivalry to a full-blown power struggle. Although she started out as the ruling co-regent, Cleopatra was soon evicted into exile by her brother's crafty advisors. In search of a lifeline, she turned to Julius Caesar, who was busy touring Egypt in hot pursuit of his arch-nemesis, Pompey. The chaotic summer of 49 BC saw Cleopatra hunkering down in Alexandria, her reign hanging by a thread amidst a showdown with Ptolemy XIII. But when the going gets tough, Cleopatra gets going. Enter Pompey, fresh off a defeat from Julius Caesar and seeking asylum in Egypt, only to walk into a sinister trap. Cleopatra, known for her sharp political maneuvers and enchanting allure, decided to switch up the game. Recognizing Pompey's potential threat and the opportunities his downfall could present, she put her cards on the table. She orchestrated a power move that had her and Ptolemy XIII graciously offering military aid to the desperate Pompey. On the gloomy day of September 28, 48 BC, Pompey docked his ship near Pelusium, thinking he was stepping into a safe haven. Spoiler alert, he wasn't. Instead of a friendly welcome, Pompey faced an unexpected ambush and met a gruesome end on the Egyptian shore. Cleopatra, always the strategist, shipped Pompey's decapitated head as a dark gift to Caesar. It was a tactical move, a chilling demonstration of her loyalty to Rome and, more pointedly, to Caesar. This grim chapter of Cleopatra's reign reveals a woman unafraid to wield raw power leaving us to wonder about what lengths she'd go to secure her throne. Her audacious tactics paid off when a clearly impressed or possibly terrified Caesar threw his weight behind Cleopatra, helping her reclaim the throne. During the Battle of the Nile in 47 BCE, Ptolemy XIII made a daring attempt to flee, but ended up taking a fatal dip in the Nile River. Although the exact circumstances of his death are still a mystery, rumor has it that Cleopatra took a sinister pleasure in watching her brother-husband meet his watery doom. With Ptolemy XIII sleeping with the fishes, Cleopatra wed her other brother, Ptolemy XIV. However, this relationship was essentially a placeholder, a strategic move to secure her position as Egypt's unrivaled ruler while setting her sights on a bigger prize, Julius Caesar. Cleopatra's lost siren echoed far beyond her own brothers as she expertly wielded her charm and charisma to reel in some of the era's most influential players. She orchestrated a dramatic entrance by having herself delivered to Caesar's quarters, swathed in a carpet, then suddenly appearing in front of him, immediately capturing his fascination. Caesar fell under Cleopatra's spell, and their titillating love affair quickly became the talk of Rome. Their offspring, Caesarian, served as a living testament to their impassioned bond. And the Romans gasped when Caesar audaciously installed a gilded statue of Cleopatra in the sacred temple 
of Venus Genetrix. Despite being chased out of Rome following Caesar's brutal assassination on the Ides of March 44 BCE, Cleopatra's influence over the city was indelible. She saw Caesar's death as an opportunity to fortify her reign by eliminating her brother-husband. By July of the same year, Ptolemy XIV mysteriously expired, likely due to poisoning, masterminded by Cleopatra herself. Now unraveling the enthralling allure of Cleopatra's profound fascination with toxic potions and their deadly allure is an exploration worth undertaking. The queen was infamous for her knowledge and usage of various toxins, likely used to sweep political adversaries off the chessboard. It was rumored that Cleopatra conducted gruesome tests with poison on slaves and prisoners to understand their deadly effects even better. So it's not a stretch to think that Ptolemy XIV's untimely end was a carefully brewed plan by his spouse, sister. This lethal hobby of Cleopatra played a significant role in her life's final act, but for that, we'll keep you in suspense until later in the video. Cleopatra's reign was challenged once again by another family member, her sister, Arsinoe IV. During the chaotic times of the Alexandrian War, Arsinoe sought refuge at the Temple of Artemis in Ephesus once the dust had settled. Despite being pardoned by Caesar, Cleopatra couldn't shake off her paranoia and saw Arsinoe as a threat still waiting to be neutralized. By 41 BCE, Cleopatra had successfully won over Mark Antony, her new lover and ally. She saw this as an opportunity and used her charm to convince Antony to solve the Arsinoe problem. Antony, smitten and willing, sealed Arsinoe's fate. Arsinoe was killed in a brutal scene, right on the steps of the temple she sought refuge in, rendering the sanctuary's supposed protection meaningless. This horrifying act served as a brutal reminder of the lengths Cleopatra would go to to keep her throne secured. Delving into the complex and intriguing relationship between Cleopatra and Mark Antony reveals the extraordinary potency of her charismatic allure. With the fall of Caesar, a door closed, but Cleopatra, ever the opportunist, saw a window open. Her ambitions ran deep, and her thirst for power was still far from quenched. The stage was set for Mark Antony to enter her life, a man whom she believed she could sway to strengthen her reign and protect Egypt's independence. Bewitched by Cleopatra, Antony was ensnared in her beguiling net. They became inseparable companions, indulging in decadent pursuits. They even established their own society, the Inimitable Livers, where they threw lavish parties, indulged in extravagant wine-fueled nights, and embarked on raucous escapades across Alexandria. Cleopatra's political and romantic alliances with Julius Caesar and Mark Antony significantly amplified her power and influence. But her astute control over her public image was also a key pillar of her reign. Cleopatra's keen interest in the ancient Egyptian occult and mystical practices further bolstered her image as a reincarnation of the goddess Isis. It's plausible that she performed rituals and cast magical spells to cement her authority and enchant her subjects, making her persona even more compelling and commanding. As Cleopatra's reign progressed, her tastes veered strongly towards the extravagant. Cleopatra's decadence was extraordinary. The cost of her daily meals alone could have fed a small Egyptian city. Among her many luxuries, Cleopatra reportedly allocated nearly half of Egypt's income to her beauty treatments and other indulgences. She had a particular penchant for fragrances and even owned her own perfume factory, believing that scent played a crucial role in persuasion. She was deeply invested in the art of perfumery. Cleopatra's daring power play brought her into conflict with Octavian, the future Roman emperor. Accused of using Mark Antony to take Roman lands, Cleopatra staunchly supported Antony. She played a vital role in the war against Octavian, providing a quarter of Antony's fleet. But their tactics failed in the critical Battle of Actium in 31 BC. Cleopatra chose a strategic retreat, focusing on defending Egypt, which was seen as abandoning Antony. This played into Octavian's narrative of her manipulation, leading to their defeat and ending their ambitions for Rome. And like all things, the once great queen faced a tragic and harrowing demise. In a well-known turn of events, she met a tragic end in 30 BC, when Octavian's forces relentlessly pursued her to Alexandria, leading her to take her own life. Antony, her consort and ally, is said to have fatally stabbed himself in the stomach, but the manner of Cleopatra's death remains less certain. Legend holds that she coked an asp, likely a viper or Egyptian cobra, to bite her breast. But the ancient chronicler Plutarch admits that what really took place is known to no one. According to Plutarch, Cleopatra was reputed to hide a lethal poison within one of her hair combs. 
Strabo, on the other hand, speculates that she may have used a fatal ointment as a means of causing harm. This romantic account of her death suggests that she likely killed herself to avoid capture by Octavian, reuniting with Antony in death. However, this narrative is being questioned. Some suggest that Cleopatra was murdered, a victim of the political machinations she once wielded so effectively. It's possible that Octavian, who stood to gain most from her death, orchestrated it to consolidate his control over Egypt and Rome. This is History on Fleek, and we'll see you next time.